Here are all the bouts wound and ready to put on the loom. I'll wind the first colorway onto the loom, then tie on each successive color. The first step is to slide the bouts onto the leaf sticks and pre-slay the reed. I work back to front and use my reed as a rattle. I sped this process up about eight times. Once I have the leaf sticks through the bouts, I thread cords that are strung from the back of my loom to the front through the holes in the ends of the leaf sticks and secure the ends to the wings of the loom to support the leaf sticks. I measure 11 inches from the center of the reed, which is half the width of my project. This is where I start slaying. Since this is being threaded at 20 ends per inch, I can slay the reed slash rattle with two threads per dent in a 10 dent reed. This is 8-2 cotton and it's wound with a loop at the end, so I don't use a slaying hook for this part. I just shove the ends through the dents with my fingers. It goes pretty fast even without speeding up the video. This particular loom has a feature where I can drop the jack box down out of the way while winding the warp. This makes it a lot easier. Once the warp is laid through the reed, I thread the loops onto the back rod, spacing the cords evenly. I remove the back beams so the warping rod can get right up close. Once I have it all neat and orderly, I can put the back rod back on. Once I have it neat and orderly, I can put the back beam on and pull the warp back. It looks a bit clumsy, but it's a lot easier on my back than trying to reach over everything. I get everything neatened up again, insert my warp separator paper, and start winding on. I use a system of water bottles hung from the warp bouts to provide the weight since I warp alone. It works pretty well for warping alone. You just have to keep moving the bottles down the warp every yard or so. Before I get to the very end, I have to transfer my cross from in front of the reed to behind the reed. I've demonstrated this in another video that I've posted a link to in the upper right corner. Basically, it uses three leaf sticks. You can see how I move one to the back using the third leaf stick, take it out, then turn the second one on its side and insert the leaf stick behind the reed again. Voila, cross transferred. So I secure the ends of the leaf sticks with the cord again and tie it onto the front of the loom. This lets the leaf sticks float level. Then I wind on the last little bit. I remove the secure cross threads and cut the loops. I don't want to pull the warp through the reed just yet because I need to tie the next warp onto this one. So I'll just cut the loops and secure them with the clips. I did a separate video on how I set this up for tying on, which you can find the link to in the upper right corner. It is a long process and I'm not very fast at it. Well, the video is sped up so it looks like I'm fast at it. But it does save time having to warp the loom completely four times since I'm doing four sets of four towels. 
It also saves having to thread the heddles each time. I did time myself for this entire project and it took me about four hours to tie on each warp. It probably takes me that long to warp my loom and thread the heddles, so it's a toss up time wise. However, I did save about three quarters yard of yarn on each warp that would have been loom waste. And tying on allows me to multitask, watching videos or listening to audiobooks. It's not a completely mindless task, you do need to watch which threads you're picking from each cross so as not to cross them. But other than that, you can let your mind do other things too. Once the last color way was wound on, I cut the loops and pulled them through the reed and secured them in preparation for threading. Overnight, I raised the jack box and got things ready for threading. You can see the jack box is up and I'm able to plug in my additional lighting. Okay, we have the loom set up to thread the heddles now. So what I have done here is I have uh, taken my pattern and this is a turned Atwater Bronson uh, structure and so there are far more uh, heddles on shafts one and two than the other shafts. Uh, shafts one and two are the tie down shafts and shafts three through eight are the pattern shafts. So I have counted out all the heddles on one, on both sides, made sure that I have enough, and then I've divided them into the groups that they go in. So there are 18 uh, per repeat on shaft one, and then six on two, and two on each of three through eight. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, thread those, and so each repeat is one color stripe in the pattern. So we'll go ahead and we'll start down here and we will just go ahead and uh, thread our pattern. I'm going to push these over and I count out, well, I didn't have to count out the threads uh, because it's, uh, there's 36 threads in a repeat and there are 36 threads in a stripe. So I just, uh, I put a stripe in between each set of heddles that's in a repeat. And now when I thread, I don't have to worry about counting out my heddles. And I also know that if I end up with too few or too many heddles, that I have done something wrong and I can uh, correct the mistake within this 36 thread repeat. Uh, there are six threads at the very beginning, and when I wound this, I wound uh, six extra threads. So we'll pull those off, and we will do those first. And this is 8-2 cotton, and with 8-2 cotton and uh, Texel heddles. I tend to just um, thread my heddles with my fingers. It just seems to go faster for me. And one of the things that I really like about this loom is the fact that because it is a folding loom, 
I can get up nice and close to my heddles and sit here in front of them and get down to eye level and thread away. Um, this right here is the uh, foot bar for my treadles and it comes up, uh, rotates up and fits in a couple uh, pegs on the loom and it acts as a, it allow, allows me to get very close to the loom and it also allows me a place to put my arms when I'm threading. So just one of the many cool features of the Bergman loom. Okay, so now we will start off with our pattern. And there we have the first repeat gun. So I use these clips uh, to secure my warp. Um, just makes it easy. I don't have to tie an overhand knot or anything like that. Um, and they're nice and sturdy. So I thought I'd give you a bird's eye view of this. So I've got all my heddles here and I'm going to pull, oops, I need to take my clip off. Pull my clip or my first two off. So you can see that didn't take very long.
And because I've counted out my petals and I've counted out my threads, and if I end up with the correct number of threads and petals being used, I feel pretty confident um, that my threading is correct. And so I don't really need to check it. Um, I may go back and check it uh, before I actually tie on, but um, we'll see how I'm feeling, how confident I feel. And then the last six threads are on shelves one and two. Okay, so that is the last of the threading. And I think I will go back and just double check everything real quick. Um, just to be certain, because I really hate having to re-thread after I tie my warp on. Um, and I know I'm good uh, within each group. I know that I have enough threads and enough petals. Uh, but if I got something um, misthreaded within the group, then I can easily fix it uh, within those 36 threads. Now that all the petals are threaded and I've checked the threading, I can slay the reed. Slaying the reed from the back and not having the loop uh, on the threads to thread it through the reed makes it a little more difficult uh, to do with just my fingers. So I do use a slaying hook for this part. I'm careful not to get any threads crossed and thread two threads per dent. I count them out with my fingers and uh, then slay them into the reed. I prefer to lash on, so once the reed is slayed, I divide the warp into half inch sections <clears throat> and tie a slip knot, making each bout approximately the same length. I like to use half inch sections as it gives me a little more control on uh, the warp and the tensioning. So once I have that done, I put my breast bean back on and place, uh, bring my apron rod up and open a plain weave shed. I tie my lashing cord on and using the plain weave shed, I can pass the lash cord through that shed and around my warping rod. I adjust the tension across the lashing. And then I secure the ends. I still need to tie up the treadles and then I'm finally ready to weave. The entire process of winding the warp and warping the loom took about 35 hours. 
I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, and stay tuned for my next video where I weave these beautiful towels. Thanks, and happy weaving!